Welcome back to the FlipNerd.com REI Classroom, where experts from across the real estate investing industry teach you quick lessons to take your business to the next level. And now, let's meet today's expert host. Hi there, and welcome to the REI Classroom. My name is Michael Blanc, and I'll be your instructor today. Today, we're going to talk about how to handle proof of funds when you don't have any. This REI Classroom real estate lesson is sponsored by UglyOpportunities.com. So I write a lot about raising money from others specifically uh, uh, to, to purchase apartment buildings, though what I'm going to talk about here applies to really any kind of real estate that you want to raise money for. And you know, here's the problem. When, when you're a newbie and or you don't have cash, let's say it's a combination of the two, you know, how do you get into the game? You know, and specifically, how do you address the proof of funds problem? And it comes up both with flipping houses but with apartment buildings. And obviously... The challenge is that when you're just starting out, you may not have the proof of funds. And it can be a real challenge because before you're invited to submit a contract, the selling a listing broker might say, yeah, that's fine. Uh, you know, the number is fine, but, but submit a proof of funds with your offer. And you're like, ah, now what do I do? You're stuck. Okay. So here's the, here's the truth. The underlying issue, the reason that the listing brokers require proof of funds is to, you know, filter out the riffraff. Frankly, okay, and they do it normally because they don't think you can actually buy the property because they sense that you're a newbie and don't have any money. Okay, so this is why they they do it. Sometimes they do it only because that's the way they do it. They have their own system and they do it in this way. And one of the things is always to get a proof of funds, or maybe the maybe the seller requires it. But most of the time, they do it when they sense that they have someone on the other end who's a newbie, which isn't so bad. They'll, you know, everybody takes a newbie's money, but worse, they don't have the money to actually close on it. So, so that's really why they. And knowing that helps because I'm going to give you kind of four tips on how to what to do about this. So the first thing is when you well the first thing to kind of come hand in hand is to act credible. Okay, so act credible. So when you open your mouth, don't sound like a newbie. Okay, get some education, attend a seminar. You know, learn the lingo and sound like at least sound like sound good. You know, sound like you know what you're doing. So that's that's number one. And when you put an offer together, just put you know add a you know offer package. Don't just submit a letter of intent or contract. Add a credibility package around it. You know, it's a cover letter. It's a bio, not just about you, but you're about your team. Maybe you have an advisory board. Maybe you have an attorney. Maybe you have a bro- uh, a property manager around it. Okay, so it looks more credible. And to be proactive, you might want to add a proof of funds. And I'll talk about that in a second. So. It, the first step is to appear credible right from the beginning, from that first co- phone call and your actions after that. Okay. Now, tip number t- number two essentially is the push back. Push back on the broker. Now, if you're raising money, which is what I what I teach people to do, you know, you're not you don't have the million dollars in the bank because you're going to raise the money. Okay. You don't have it, and so you need to you need to persuade the listing agent that that's what you're doing. And you're syndicating the deal. You don't have the money. And uh, and you just need to push back and say, look, you know, it just can't be done. I don't ever do it this way. And you know, are, I, I, should we stop talking? And let the real estate agent decide if they if they if if that's a showstopper for them. They might go, well, fine. You know, let's go ahead and move forward anyway. And that's probably what they'll do. And that will work about, I say, half the time at least. Now, tip number three is to actually do something about it. And, and you can do this proactively. And there's two things you can do about proof of funds. Number one is, let's say you're raising money and you have some verbal commitments. Let's say you have $200,000 from you know seven investors. Have them sign a letter of intent to invest with you. And it's a, it's a, a meaningless piece of paper that says, hey, Michael's a good guy. I got $25,000 to invest him for the right deal. Have a nice day. And that's really all it says. But when you have like five or six or seven of these tacked onto your offer package, the broker can see that you're actually raising money and there's some signatures, some names and amounts. So that really helps a lot. And tip number four is to get a proof of funds from someone else. Now, this does not have to be an investor. It simply has to be someone with the proof of funds, with the money or the stocks uh, in hand. And this person, there's no commitment on this from this person to actually invest with you. And I got a couple people like that. They have some money, but they're so conservative they would not invest in apartment buildings. And it doesn't matter what I tell them, but they have some money. And, and then basically what you do is you ask them, their financial institution, to write a letter that says, you know, Sam's got $300,000 uh, under management with us. Call me with any questions. And it doesn't cost them anything. It's a favor to you. It doesn't cost them anything. Their banker or their financial advisor will write it for them. And it's an easy thing to do. And you can tack that at the end of their offer package as well. 
So, you know, there you have it. There's four tips for what to do when you're faced with a proof of funds, and hopefully that will get you into your first contract. All right, great. Thanks very much, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Homevestors, the We Buy Ugly Houses folks, is a franchise system of hundreds of real estate investors that have purchased over 65,000 houses. If you'd like to learn more about the most powerful real estate investing system in existence, whether you're a pro looking to take your business to the next level, or whether you have no experience at all but a burning passion to be successful in real estate investing, please visit flipnerd.com slash ugly to learn more. Please note, the views and opinions expressed by the individuals in this program do not necessarily reflect those of Flipner.com or any of its partners, advertisers, or affiliates. Please consult professionals before making any investment or tax decisions, as real estate investing can be risky. Are you a member yet of Flipner.com, the hottest real estate investing social community online? If not, you can join for free in less than 30 seconds and get access to hundreds of off-market deals, vendors in your market to help you in your business. And you can start networking with thousands of other investors just like you. Get your free account now at FlipNerd.com. Please check out the FlipNerd family of real estate investing shows where you can access hundreds of expert interviews, quick tips, and lessons from leaders across the real estate investing industry. They're available at FlipNerd.com slash shows or simply search for FlipNerd in the iTunes store. 